Hello everybody, welcome back to Cincy Living. This is Jason bringing you today's video. As always everyone, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We have a ton of videos coming out for you guys. So for today, I actually have an email that was sent to me that I will be responding to. Please send me your emails guys. I don't get a whole lot of emails. I prefer to shoot videos based on what you guys ask for. Either strategies that you send me, I'll happily showcase the strategy or compare strategies if that's something you were looking for or uh, answer questions like this particular video. Now this video has a number of questions and I'm actually going to have to modify all of them except the first one because of how I'm going to answer the first one. So his questions dealing with crafts is can you tell a pro from someone that just knows the game very well? How do they play differently? Well no because there's no such thing as professional crafts. Player. There is no such thing as professional craft player. Now, I'm not going to, anybody comments, oh yes there is, or anything like that. I'm just going to delete those comments because we're not going to go getting into a back and forth on, on this. There's all kinds of anecdotal stories of people that know somebody that knew a pro player or knows some, but there's no such thing as a pro craft player. There, there flat out isn't. Any more than there's a such thing as, say, a professional buffalo slot player. Because it's a game of chance. There's professional poker players because it's a game of skill. Craps is a game of chance. There's no such thing as a professional roulette player. There's no such thing as a, a, a professional baccarat player. There's rich people that can spend their money only on playing baccarat or roulette or something like that. But there's no such thing as a professional player on games of pure chance. Anybody know, anybody know a professional coin flipper? I, I don't. Now, again, it's a game of chance. Anybody who tells you differently does not understand science, does not understand physics, uh, the physics of the universe that we live in, or cheats. There, that's why there technically can sort of be such a thing as a professional blackjack player because of card counting. Because of card counting, however, they're going to find themselves getting kicked out of all kinds of places because of it and they won't really be able to to maintain it not to mention card count, counting actually while it does give the player an advantage it's such a tiny advantage you have to play enormous sums of money for exceedingly ridiculous amounts of time to actually make any kind of profit that be, that would be equivalent to just having a job um, now of course once again you get those people well it's you know it's a game of skill because of this because of this because of this no it's a game of chance it's a game of chance those people that say it's a game of skill First off, you will notice that they are trying to sell books, trying to sell courses at their, their business or CDs or whatever it may be, not out there playing the game. They're trying to make their money off of all the suckers, not out there trying to make, make their money at the game that they can beat. Um, secondly, then, of course, you have your dice setters. Well, here's the thing. If the dice hit the back wall and tumble, both dice hit the back wall and tumble, then, again, by all the laws of the physics of the universe that we live in, it's a random roll. It's a random roll, cannot be affected. All these wannabe dice setters out there, again, I've seen, I've seen some that charge five, six thousand dollars for, for their courses. So again, they're, they're making five, six thousand dollars off, off suckers if they were, if their system was so great, they'd be out playing. And of course, you've got those anecdotal stories again of people, oh, I was kicked out because I was winning too much. Yeah, again, that's a whole lot of BS. The, the casinos have players that come in and bet $5 million a hand. They don't care if someone has a nice streak and wins $60,000, $80,000, $150,000. That's not even a blip on their radar. It's meaningless. That does not mean that players like that have not been kicked out. Those dice setters, I, I, can, I can tell you that I've probably had more dice setters kicked off the table than anything else. You know why? Because they don't hit the back wall. As long as they hit the back wall, we don't care. Hit the back wall and tumble, we're good to go. But they don't hit the back wall, they get kicked out. What's their excuse they give? Oh, I was winning too much. Yeah, right, no, you were, you were just not following the rules. Um, so, that being said, there are players that are very, very, very good at this game that win more than other players do. It does not mean that they win more than they lose, absolutely not, but they win more than other players do. I've seen a player that buys in for $100 and wins $60,000, $70,000. Um, and uni pretty universally, he's the one that, that the most dealers and floors that I know of 
consider the best cross player that we have seen. There's some others that are really, really good, really knowledgeable of the game, really understanding of the odds, really understanding of what it takes to win. And again, win conditions. The idea is if you, ca if you catch that 30, 40 minute roll, do you win enough to cover all the other bad times? Basically, this player might buy in, might, might win $60,000, $70,000 off, off a $100 buy-in if they catch the right roll. But I can't tell you how many times I've seen them lose $1,000. I've also seen this player win 10,000, 15, 20, pretty much every denomination. And they usually don't lose more than a thousand bucks at a time. So they, they know how to take advantage of the big rolls, but over time they are, they, they have still lost, but they are one of the, they are the best player I've ever seen. And I've seen some others that are fantastic. So moving on to the next question, do I or anyone else that I know, know someone that has succeeded at making a living in craps? Nope, not at all, no, not at all. Um, number three, what is the typical, what is the buy-in typically, typically or range for these so-called called mythical pro craps players? Again, no such thing as a pro craps player, but generally, um, it depends. If I'm looking at a ten or fifteen dollar table, typically I will see a thousand dollar to a fifteen hundred dollar buy-in because they know they need to catch the big roll. They need to catch the big roll without losing too much, so they're just going to hope they catch the big roll within the first fifteen rolls, fifteen shooters. Um, outside of that. If you're on, say, a $25 table, then they're probably looking at maybe a $3,000, $4,000 buy-in um, or a $50 minimum bet table, $100 minimum bet table. Again, looking to try and catch that, that big, big roll within the first 15 shooters or so. Next question, how much does a, I hate saying pro because there's no such thing, but how much do these players try to win a range or a percentage? Typically, they're not going to, the, the really, really, really good players are going to win 10 times, a minimum of 10 times their buy-in on at least a $20 roll. So if the player buys in for $1,000, they're going to, if they catch a 20 minute roll or longer, they're gonna win at least $10,000, at least $10,000. Their strategies are designed to take full advantage of those big rolls. If they're buying in for say $5,000, then they're probably not going to be happy unless they, they color up at least minimum $50,000. So it just depends on whether or not they catch that big roll. But generally, it's not that they're, win they're trying to win a certain dollar amount as they're trying to catch a certain length of roll. They're trying to catch a certain, you know, 20, 20 30, 20 minute roll or longer. Because the way their strategy is based, as long as they catch that roll, they will make their money, period. Now, how often do these players play? Well, here's the thing. These, these great players, when, they're, when they lose, when they take a big beating, we don't see them for a while. When they... When they, uh, if they take a big win, for instance, player the one that bought in for hundred bucks and won over sixty thousand dollars, sixty six thousand, I want to say. We saw him every day for the next two weeks. He, on average, lost two thousand dollars a day every single day. We also know that he plays at three or four other casinos as well. So he gave that sixty thousand dollars back in about two weeks, two to three weeks. What strategies do they use? Once again, this will be somewhat controversial to all to the people out there that have their their strategies that they are so diehard and dogmatic about. But power press, they use the power press. That is it. There is no none of them. None of the truly, truly, truly successful craps players that I've ever seen. The most successful craps players I've ever seen. None of say the top hundred do any kind of regressive strategy. They don't do any kind of wait x number of rolls before placing their bets. They don't do any hedges. Just place bets and power press. Maybe a mid press, but typically they have a point on each number where they will, where they will collect before they go back to power pressing. Um, or they start with a mid press and switch to a power press. But either way, they go for it. Which gets to the next question, what is their pressing strategies? Power press. Again, some of them use a mid press, but they switch to a power press really fast. Um, what is the longest someone has ever lasted going pro? Zero seconds. No such thing. And I'm not too sure what this last question is. Is anyone made on an ETG? And if so, which one or ones? Um, I'm guessing they mean the electronic table games and I, I, I honestly don't understand the question. So if you could email me, I'd be happy to, to answer that question if you could clarify it for me. Otherwise, thank you everybody for watching. We will catch you guys next time. Bye now.